What's the longest a new adjuster could stay on a major hurricane event? Uh, the I firms will cut the newbies first, Dylan, but not because they're new necessarily, but just because they have less experience. They're taking a lot longer to get the, their files closed or they spin out, right? They just can't, they can't get it figured out. Um, a new adjuster, if you've got this down, if, you, if you've got the, if you hit the ground running, you got good training, um, then, you know, you're closing the claims that they give you in a reasonable time and, and their phone's not blowing up with people screaming and yelling at you're causing all kinds of messes everywhere. You can stay on it for as long as they've got stuff for you to do. I mean, it, it, plenty of new adjusters get asked to do cleanup. And cleanup is when you're doing that three months thing, you're effectively doing what we call cleanup. Um, and cleanup is you're doing supplements and reinspections on a, your claims and other adjusters' claims. So... This is why people make a lot of money doing this work, not because they just like show up with, they get like an Xactimate level two certification and two licenses, and then they make $160,000. They make $160,000 or 150 or 200 or whatever it is by busting their ass, being smart about how they do the work and staying working for as long as possible, okay? The whole point of my training is to teach you guys how to do that. Not just to like, you know, here's your laptop, here's the on button, right? That kind of stuff. It's let's let's have a framework that you can you can use to um, fall back on that you can use to scale your claims your claims handling production. There is only one company that provides E&O and general liability insurance solely to the insurance industry, and that's Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance that you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Uh, Josue, um, I've been on the restoration side for 12 years and is interested in the I side. Um, I can direct you in the right path to take here. Um, if you're interested in property claims work, Josue, um, I would start you off at adjustertv.com slash start. Um, there is, you know, if you want to go up a level, um, from that and you want to like start getting into some like that adjustertv.com slash start is really kind of like the the here's the the, the basics of how the stuff works what you can expect etc um, and then adjuster tv plus i'm sure dean's already put a bunch of these links in there but adjuster tv plus is where you start getting into sort of strategic and tactical trainings for how to be an adjuster, how to do actually do the job itself. And then fast track to deployment, um, if you're ready to do go there, that's a full-fledged um, soup to nuts claims process, um, property adjuster training for field and, and desk adjusters. Those are the kind of the three levels of stuff that we have. I, if you're like, just want to learn more about it, or if you're like, oh, I don't know if it's for me or not, then I would start at adjustertv.com slash start. It's free and it's, it's uh, there's like a seven or eight video uh, training in there. So Dylan got some great questions. Um, what months did you typically find slowest through your career? It's the holidays, like Thanksgiving through maybe up to like the Super Bowl. You can pretty much count on it being pretty quiet unless there's a winter event and then all bets are off. Um, so, but yeah, it's it's usually, it's usually the holidays. Although I will say I have been deployed the day after Christmas, the day before Christmas, you know, so it can happen anytime. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at hagueeducation.com. I haven't re renewed my license yet. Can I learn exactly how to do this job? You can learn Xactimate and do part the estimating part of the job. Um, if you want to do Xactimate only, go to adjustertvplus.com where we have Xactimate uh, level one and two trainings in there, as, along with Xactimate mobile and Symbility. Um, that would be my suggestion. Um, Dylan, how much do you typically spend each year for all of your licenses? Well, some of licenses um, renew every two years. The renewal is a lot cheaper 
than getting the initial it's the pre-licensing stuff. In fact, the renewal for the some of the licenses, if you got like your Florida license, you live in Colorado and you got your Florida DHS and you want your Oklahoma license, you know, it's the Oklahoma license just to get that one with reciprocity from Florida. It's a lot cheaper than the pre-licensing. You don't have to take a course to, to do the, the Oklahoma one is the point. So it's it's going to be a big chunk. If you bought all the licenses all at the same time, all 34 of them, it's like $1,800, like all in. Um, it doesn't cost you that every year to renew them. But even if it did, um, I think it would be worth it. You know, you have to take your continuing education, but you only have to take that for your home state, your DHS, and any other like non-reciprocal states. Like if you got Florida as your home state license and you've got like 15 other licenses that are reciprocal with Florida, you only need to take Florida's 24 or 40 or whatever they ask for. Um, which could cost 35 bucks. It can cost 60 bucks, right? It's not going to cost any more than $100 for that, for CE. And you can get a lot of that stuff going to conferences and trainings and stuff. Um, but if you have a New York license on top of that, then you'll have to take CE for New York as well. Uh, a lot of the time, the same CE classes you take for Florida are going to be good for whoever, right? So in other words, they're, New, New York will say, Hey, you need to have four hours of ethics. Well, you need four hours for ethics for Florida too, right? And it's, it's the same course. How long does it take to get a job? Well, right now, your chances are pretty good. Um, the more licenses you have, the shorter that will be. Uh, so if you don't want to renew your license, um, then you're kind of setting yourself, uh, I think, at a disadvantage. How do you manage to transition as a single income household to become an adjuster? <laughs> Dwight, the can of worms. So <clears throat> um, this is a, a, can be a little bit of a delicate balance. Um, the key here is, is do you want to burn a bridge, right? So you can, you can have your job, right? Whatever it is that you do and in, on nights and weekends or your time off, you're taking Xactimate training, you're picking up licenses, you're going and doing tra other trainings, and you're getting fast track, you're going to MoCat, whatever you're doing, right? And then September 8th, um, Hurricane Harry shows up and absolutely devastates the coast. It just like starts at Brownsville and just completely rides the coast all the way around Florida and all up the coast. And so it's like all hands on deck. They want every adjuster in the country. Even if you're not an adjuster, they're going to throw you at that storm, right? You can call and you get the call, right? And they say, hey, we need to send you to Florida. Then you say, okay, I'll be there tomorrow or whenever, you know, we'll, we'll leave immediately. Hang up and then call your boss at the job that your normal day job. Say, hey, listen, I quit. And it's, I'm not giving you two weeks. I'm giving you, this is, well, this is your notice right now. It's zero, zero weeks notice, zero seconds notice. Um, probably going to burn the bridge. If you can um, handle that, and if you think that you can, you know, maybe you quit at that company, but you know that you could get work at another company in a, in a similar field that you like, you know, that's pretty easily if, if, if the storm, when the storm season ends or if it falls through, right, this, this happens. And this is, this is, because this is the, uh, such a can of worms, this is, this can be like really kind of tragic. Um, back in 20, uh, I want to say 16, whatever year Florence was, it might have been 2015. Um, There's a couple of hurricanes that didn't really do a whole lot. And they sent a bunch of adjusters, right? So you get the call. And, All right, we need to go to uh, Savannah, Georgia. Jump in the truck and you head towards Savannah, Georgia. And you, and you get there and they say, well, uh, you know, wasn't actually as big as we thought it was going to be. So uh, we really don't have anything for you. But uh, here's a couple hundred bucks for, you know, you being here today. And uh, well, you know, we'll just uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And then they send you home, right? You quit your job, you burn the bridge, you burn, the bridge is gone, right? It's ashes in the bottom of the, the ravine. And then the storm didn't, didn't, didn't pan out, right? And then the, the hurricane season ends and nothing else happened, right? You have to have a way to make money, obviously, what I often tell people to do is find something that you can do. And this, like in general, um, this doesn't really apply to like, like right this minute, 
because you may it may very well be that you're going to burn a bridge if a hurricane blows up next week. But in general, if this this was say like February, give your find something else that you can do that you know can replace your income and and cover your bills. You guys may be doing the Dave Ramsey thing where beans and rice and rice and beans, right? And you're, you're, there's no trips. There's no like going out to eat. There's no like Amazon, the UPS truck showing up every single day with Amazon packages. You have to stop all that stuff and just, you're going to drive for Uber. You're going to have to deliver pizza. You're going to work as a bartender. You're going to find something else to do that you can get it, a job that you can get very, very quickly and that you can quit really, really easily and you don't care. Either you don't care, it's, it's a bridge, you don't care if you burn it or not, or it's something that you could pick right back, like Uber, right, or Uber Eats or something like that. You could turn it off and on, right, for months, right? So you can do it for six weeks and then get called for a storm and just shut that off and then go do your storm and come back and turn it back on and it, Uber doesn't care. They're not going to get mad at you. If you can do that, then then that's when I would quit my consider quitting my day job, finding something I can replace that that income with that is can it the minimum cover my basic expenses maybe i work at the at you know i'd make a decision and we go on the the rice and beans plan the no amazon plan um for six months and all the extra money we're still working on our day job but all that extra money goes into a savings account to help as a buffer and to pay for gear and training and and to pay for have be have as an emergency fund and then we give our boss like a month's notice, right? And we say, hey, listen, you know, I've decided to change careers, but I wanna, you know, I really appreciate, you know, the opportunities here and I love working with you guys and it's, it's a hard decision, da, da 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 But I wanna help you out so, I, you know, I can give you a 30-day notice, um, find somebody to uh, replace me, I will train them if, you know, if you think that, that makes sense or whatever, right, to help them out, give them an extra time to find somebody to replace you. And then that way, you're not really burning the bridge. You're like painting the bridge and putting flowers on it and, you know, like muffins laying out, you know, like a charcuterie plate on the bridge instead of lighting the thing on fire. That would be what I would do um, or what I would try to do anyway. And it's, it's a challenge. Um, I did a video about this a year or two ago. Um, and basically, I, I think I came up with if you're getting into – July, this, this, that particular plan I just explained works great up until about like, I wouldn't try to do it after like the end of July or the, maybe the middle of July. Um, that would be the point where I would just hang on to my job and then we're going to burn that bridge. If store, if storm season were, were like, say, you know, we're having this conversation right now, it's the end of August and storm season, the hurricane season isn't going to peak for another two or three weeks. Right. So we got, you got time, but if we get into, Halloween and nothing's happened, we're going to kick this off to next year. We're not going to, nobody's quitting any job, right? We, we may go on the rice and beans program and start saving back more money or whatever, but we're not going to be quitting our day job in October and sitting around and waiting for a storm. That's going to be a huge mistake. Does that make sense? Find out how you can get free access to my complete online course on how to become a highly paid independent insurance adjuster right here.